Or that Danish boy who lives below me, you know, Niels, the one who keeps asking me about the resistance. He's always saying that he wants to join because his home country is occupied just like France. I didn't think he was serious, but tonight he's brought me a tip that we should definitely take advantage of. Remember how the Nazis took over the Paris Academy of Music and started using it as a makeshift armory? Neil said that they are transferring a whole truckload of ordnance later tonight from there to the Gestapo field office in Dubuisson. He stole a copy of the manifest and showed it to me. The truck will be carrying crates of ammunition, explosives, small arms and even a few heavy machine guns. Just the kind of supplies we need to restock our weapons cache. I will need you to be my lookout tonight while I hijack the truck. It should be fairly simple, since the Germans won't be expecting us. When this is all over, we may have a new member for our little resistance team. As always, if we get separated, head for the catacombs and meet up with the people there. Tell them you're my sister and they will help you. It's getting late. We'd better move out. Good morning, Mademoiselle Baptiste. My name is Colonel Hargrove. I'm from the Office of Strategic Services. I heard you've been looking for us. To be honest, we've been looking for you. We just didn't know it. Now, I'm sorry to be crass, but while we've been aware of your brother Jacques for some time, we had never heard of Manon Baptiste until you made contact with our station chief yesterday morning. We knew your brother occasionally worked with another assistance member. I'm just sorry to say that I assumed it was another man. He was wise to keep your identity a secret. I've seen several good operatives denounced by people they thought they could trust. With both your anonymity and your brother gone, you could have easily opted to return to a quiet civilian life. You could have even collaborated. Turning over those papers you collected to the Gestapo would have earned you a lot of special privileges under the German authority. Instead, you committed yourself to a life on the run, away from everyone and everything you've ever known. From the looks of your G2 debriefing, you and your brother found yourselves in some pretty hairy situations during the early days of the occupation. And it's exactly that kind of experience we need to employ if our intelligence operations are to stand a chance. We're preparing to launch a major assault in North Africa very soon. Unfortunately, all the men we've sent out to do reconnaissance have had their covers blown. Now, as serendipity would have it, we've learned that a Vichy propaganda magazine has sent a female correspondent all the way to Casablanca to profile the brave men of the Africa Corps. We want you to intercept this woman and take her place. It should provide the ideal cover for getting in there and seeing what Rommel is up to. And if the opportunity presents itself, we want you to take action to disrupt his operations. If successful, your exfiltration will be by airplane, specifically in an old Northrop Alpha that's perfectly suited for this kind of special operation. The pilot is a lieutenant in the Air Transport Command who's been given strict orders not to even look at you, as we don't want to compromise your identity in any way. You'll be briefed on the rest of the specifics during your transit to the African continent. It's a privilege for the OSS that you want to join our ranks. Be careful and good luck. I'll see you when you get back. Good to see you back from North Africa in one piece. There's no time to waste as we have a tricky new assignment for you. As part of a continuing mission to legitimize their bloodthirsty conquest, the Nazis have announced a major archaeological excavation on the Greek island of Crete. Unfortunately for the priceless architecture and relics there, the Germans are defacing, not digging. Although the Third Reich only dates back a decade, the Nazis are desperately trying to establish their pedigree as one that stretches all the way back to antiquity. Employing phony archaeologists with forged credentials, the Germans are planting evidence, doctoring reports, and even going so far as to carve swastikas into the walls of these ancient ruins. Normally, this pathetic propaganda effort would not be worth our attention. 
but the dig is also serving as cover for the installation of a massive artillery battery that, if allowed to become operational, would bring Allied shipping to a halt in the region. We cannot allow that to happen, especially at this crucial stage of the war. These guns are heavily fortified within the excavated sublevels of the coastal wall. Obviously, because of the historic location, airstrikes are currently out of the question. That's why we're sending you in. Since it worked well in Casablanca, you'll be undercover again as a foreign correspondent armed with a camera. Your mission is to infiltrate the dig and prevent further molestation of the site. Then locate the big guns and carefully take them out of commission. You'll travel to Crete aboard a stolen Italian trawler. Be at the dock by 0800 hours tomorrow morning. Bon voyage. You've been on some tough assignments, Manon, but this time we're sending you to a rather dark place. This, of course, is Heinrich Himmler, Reichsfuhrer of the SS. One of the more pitiful excuses for a human being that you'll ever encounter. Did you know he was a fertilizer salesman before the war? The quality of his current product isn't much different. He spent the last few years trying to sell Hitler on the creation of an official SS nation-state within Germany, establishing a royal class among the master race. Unfortunately, Himmler and the SS seem to be getting their way. The influence of this criminal organization has continued to grow as the war has gone on, to the point that they already have many trappings of an autonomous republic, including their own economy, political system, even their own army, the Waffen-SS, and now it seems their own capital. This is Wevelsburg. It's a castle in the Paderborn region near the town of Buren that Himmler has slowly been converting into his personal palace over the last couple of years. Since the SS has so much power and is responsible for so much within the Third Reich, we've decided to send you inside Wevelsburg to find out what exactly is going on in there. Steal whatever documents you can. They'll not only inform us of their current activities, but they also might prove to be valuable evidence at the inevitable war crimes tribunal for these deviants. Your transport leaves tomorrow morning at 0500 hours. Be extremely careful, Manon. We're not sure what you're going to encounter, except that it's most likely going to be bad. There's a new mission that suddenly opened up, but it's strictly on a volunteer basis. This is the town of Casino, the gateway to Rome. And this is the abbey that sits above Casino, on a small mountain that is the most strategic spot in a most strategic town. The Allies have been stuck here for weeks, unable to take the hill or the abbey from the Germans, and time is running out. Unlike the ruins on Crete, command has made the decision that it's time to attack the site from the air, no matter the consequences to history or scholarship. The abbey has been there for over 1,400 years, and tomorrow, it's going to be bombed into oblivion. Now, here's where it gets complicated. Just within the last hour, we finished translating a message that was transmitted from the Abbey last night. It was written in, of all things, Latin. What it says is quite troubling. The author claims to be a monk sympathetic to the Allied cause, someone who doesn't want to see any more loss of life on either side. Now, here's the really distressing part. The monk claims that there are several downed American pilots being held inside as prisoners of war. He says they're confined to cells in the old part of the abbey and would surely be killed in a raid. There certainly have been a lot of airmen from the 8th Air Force lost over Italy, so the monk's claim is not without merit. But let me be clear, Manon. We don't have any independent confirmation of the monk's story, or if he even is a monk. The language and diction check out. But the Nazis have fooled us before. This all just might be a clever ruse on their part to prevent an aerial bombardment. The mission is fairly straightforward. Clandestinely infiltrate the Abbey, rescue the POWs, and disrupt the Germans' operation by destroying whatever equipment you can. The monk's message contained very specific instructions on how to sneak inside, which you can read on the plane if you accept this mission.
Welcome back, Mano. Things around here are going to get even more hectic than they were before. The RSS is recruiting a new agent for a very specialized mission, and I think we've got our man. Remember that young ADC pilot who got you out of North Africa a year and a half ago? A lieutenant named Jimmy Patterson? I've kept my eye on him since then, and lo and behold, he just got himself nominated for the Medal of Honor. I'm going to see him tomorrow. If he decides to accept our offer, I want to make you his boss. My gut tells me the two of you will make a good team. Not all the details of his mission have been worked out yet, but I do know that it's got something to do with the Nazis' vengeance weapons program, which brings us to the subject of your next assignment, the V-1 bus bomb. We've received mixed intelligence over the past two years about their efforts to build a long-range self-guiding flying bomb, so we weren't sure they'd ever be able to manufacture these weapons in mass quantities. Unfortunately, as we discovered this past week, they have. One of these V1s, powered by its pulse jet engine, can travel from its launch site in the French countryside to the heart of London in about 15 minutes. Some Spitfires on patrol have been able to knock down a few in mid-air, but for the most part, they get through to the city without any trouble. A few of these things have hit near my office at Whitehall, and I can tell you firsthand that it's not a pleasant experience. Some of the junior staff were at a pub that got hit. The impact crater was big enough to park a Liberty ship inside. No traces of the men were ever found. As soon as the 8th Air Force takes out a launch site, new ones spring up like weeds somewhere else. They've even air-launched a few of these missiles from specially modified Luftwaffe bombers. We've got to put a stop to this. Your mission is to disrupt their V-1 manufacturing line and to secure the deployment information for the bombs that have already been shipped out. You leave tonight at 1900 hours. Be careful, Manon, or I'll have to find someone else to watch over this Patterson kid. Time is short, so I'll be brief. With a successful breakout from Normandy by our troops, the Nazis are quickly falling back to their border. Hitler knows that France has been lost, and we've intercepted the communique ordering Dietrich von Schultitz, the general in charge of Paris, to burn the capital before the Allies get there. Apparently, though, Schultitz is having second thoughts about going down in history as the man who extinguished the City of Lights, and the Swedish Consul General has stepped in to broker a ceasefire. Unfortunately, we can't be sure all the junior officers will go along with disobeying a direct order from the Fuhrer, and there are reports of explosives being distributed to key locations around the city. Paris has survived for over four years under Nazi occupation. It would be horrible for it to be destroyed now, on the eve of its liberation. It's time for you to go home, Manon. Good luck. It's good to see you again, Lieutenant Patterson. I'm sorry to call you in during a well-deserved R&R, &R, but something has come up that we want you to investigate. One of our listening posts picked up this distress call at 2300 hours last night. Hello? Hello? Hello, please respond. This is a message for the airline command. I'm transmitting from Castle Schmielewski. We need help. Mr. I would not listen to reason. He let them loose in the castle. Do you understand? They're taking over. Can anyone, can anyone hear me? Hello? Hello? Please, please continue to ignore our distress call. Uh, tell General Eisenhower to send bombers. Find this place from the earth. The boys at OSRD have spent all day trying to analyze the sounds you hear in the background, but they can't make heads or tails of it. The castle where the broadcast originated from is on the eastern edge of the Black Forest. There were reports in the late 1930s of a laboratory being set up there for a mysterious purpose, but we've heard nothing since then, until now. Lieutenant, we want you to find out what's going on in there. Your plane leaves in an hour. If we don't hear back from you in two days, we're sending Manon in after you. Dismissed.